I got it. Now. Got it. This is it, guys. It's like my love for the cure. Okay, so uh, we're gonna run through this. It's it's sounding good, you know. I've been kind of messing with it a little bit this morning, and uh, yeah, here we go. So I'm gonna just play through it, and I'll open up some some windows and some plugins. We'll just play through the whole thing, and then we'll talk about it. JoJo Mix One.
Mm. So, yeah, it's uh, there. It is. There you have it. Um, let's do this. So I'll just talk through this real quick, and then you know, you guys, uh, you know, uh, I didn't. Tr I didn't really record any of me tracking other than that guitar, which I think I have a video that I'm going to put at the beginning of this video. The, the, the da na 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 na. I've been going through this phase, man. You know, you go through phases. Anyway, this is Superior Drummer split out. Uh, I've got also a, uh, a, a, oh, you know what? I don't have everything open. Well, whatever. Uh, I have a, uh, a trigger on, a kick trigger with some triggery things. Where is it? There it is. That's a bunch of triggery things. Yeah, sledge, I don't know. Yeah, somewhere. You know, we mess with it. And then, uh, oh, that's that. Oh, right, here's the kick. Here's the kick trigger, which is kick in. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Anyway, there you go. Banging, jumping, jumper, and then boom, and then banging, jumping. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So this is the uh, the programming of the. Uh, here's the drums, superior. It's like living after midnight. <laughs> So I was listening to this in my truck the other day, just the just the bounce of the drums, and I, you know, my, my I, I like this. All right, so I program this. So keep in mind, I'm partial to this, but I like the way I program this. I think it was good. It was cool. It was appropriate. And the one of the big things is is to get a little bit of inconsistencies in it, and also the thing I find like on eighth notes is like one is maybe a little hotter and then and is a little lower and then two is a little hot so you get like instead of it being like you know it's got like a kind of a rocking motion and you mess with it and just i don't know you just mess with it till it doesn't feel so like you know like back in the old days the old boss whatever od or 808 or 880 or 770 dr 770 and you'd program, and, and that was my first big like drum machine when I was a kid, and it was like, da, 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 da. it's funny, is every now and then I still hear like old, I hear old tunes, cassettes, they'll, they'll pop up around the studio or cleaning up or whatever, and I'll listen to a little bit of it. It still sounds cool, you know, because you're making music, right? So yeah, but you can hear that little inconsistency in the hi-hat. You know what, let me do this. Let me see if I've got, if I can uh, show and make active. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let me see. Height, jumbo. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so like here, yeah, here's the, uh, here's I think the original program of it. Let's see. Yeah, and see, see all this here. So you see, those are the hi hats up and down. You guys see that? Let's let's see. I don't know if I'm, I hope I'm right, but here it is. So you're not actually hearing this, but this is the visual of what you're. And you can see like the little the little blips, the MIDI notes are like dark light, dark light. So it gives it like a it feels a little wet and it could be a little bit too much, but uh let me just make this inactive for now. Yeah, it could be a little bit too wet, but you know what's funny listening to this and listening to this guitar part? I realized what this reminds me of. Flesh of Fantasy by Billy Idol. You know. The drums are a little verby. It's this even tide is a big one. Sometimes when you back off that verb, you gotta you gotta boost up a little bit of the snare because a lot of that verb is is the snare and kind of doing some of the old school trick, which is, you know, you put the you put the reverb on the trigger so that it's not reverbing with all of this. Sometimes it gets a little messy, so that's kind of I don't know. It was like an old I think an old SSL trick. I mean, people have been doing it for years, but anyway. Uh, 
Yeah, and the thing too about the programming, going back to a, a song reference, that I, it's one of my favorite songs ever. And the drums and the groove make the tune. That is um, Voices Carry by Till Tuesday. And uh, you know, that's, that's most likely real drums. But th- it has that like, there's something about the drums in that song. This reminds me of them. Anyway, there's that bass. You know, we got the drums coming out to to to, uh, to subs, and then out to a crush and a boss, and that's it. Like this, this template is so much easier. And then I've got a bass di. Oh, <laughs> and then I got a bass, uh, like a bass. And I added, you know, you know, and one of the reference songs, which I won't play it for licensing, is I was just, I, I didn't reference it till right before the video, just to kind of go, oh, okay, that, that, that Nickelback song, Shaking Hands. Oh my God, what a tune, man. <laughs> I mean, that's just massive. But uh, so I was like, all right, let me, let me push the envelope a little bit. And, you know, I mean, it doesn't have big, this doesn't have big crunch guitars. And obviously I'm not screaming, so it doesn't have that. But like the getting kind of an idea of the rhythm, I like the way that sounds. Bass. In your face. Now guitars. And you know, it, it, so I, I'm gonna, I, oh, how do I say this? I love, oh, there's a guitar case pushing through there. I knew I had another, <laughs> there it is. I knew I was missing a, 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 a whatever, you know, gig bag. It's I can see it, it's there. It's supposed to be there on the, I got rafters. Anyway. Uh, I love I love playing with the effects on the amp. I'm just I just it makes me happy. So that uh, this has all been printed. Kind of wish I had a little less delay. I probably in the future would attract it a little. I, I just was having so much fun. So it's this is my Strat. This is stereo. Uh, Mesa rectifier clean is the left. Uh, I've got the L cap, the golden plate H9 uh, for uh, the chorus, the classic chorus. So the mace is on my left, which would be your left, I guess that way. And then the matchless clean is on the right. So here's the mesa. That clean is just yow and match. Yeah, I mean, a little less delay. You know, I, if, I, I, now I've got it in my head. Like, go, go easier. I did. I overcooked it a little bit, but. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. And then we've got our bass synth. Funny, that's what I heard when I started writing this. I'm like, I need like that wah, 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 wah thing underneath it. And I just, I don't know what this is in. What did I do this on? Yeah, just Arturia, man. I got all of this stuff. I got Serum. I got Omnisphere. You know, you name it. I got it. But man, that Arturia. If you're new in this game and you want to get like one program to like for like, you know, unless you're like doing like dubstepy crazy aggro where you want to like have something like serum this is the program and it's i guess it's called, it's called analog lab i've had this thing for years this is the new one the five i the four was yeah but 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 look at it show all these are all the keyboards <laughs> i mean and the emulations are killer i mean the matrix is killer I mean, it's just pigments is is far out. That's just a far out program. I mean, the ARP is great. The DX7 is, I mean, that's the classic. I don't know what I used on this. Did I use the DX7? Let me see. 
How do I see what I used? Stone house base. I don't even know where it is. I, oh, shoot. Oh! And I can't go backwards in time. Hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> in the video. Stone house base, because I don't think I probably did anything to it. Let's see. Oh, you can't believe I did this. How do I search this? How do I search it? Here's the search. <laughs> oh, stone house base. I'll pry back to it. Okay. Don't be cool. Where is it? We get rid of the. Okay, get rid of this. Get rid of this. Watch. Let's see what it is. All right. It's Stonehouse Bay, DX7. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, my videos, they're crazy. And yeah, and then I went for also a pad. Blue strings. strings yeah matrix or Salino yeah I think it's the one I think it's the one um, it's Salino I think is which which one I used all right, let me just get back to home all right don't blow it up Lou you know yeah, you know and I and I, my, I played him from for Nate I was like I don't know if maybe we want to switch out the sounds he's like I don't know they sound cool you know I just I had it you know you just go I found like that's cool right The pad is weird, and that was my question. And maybe try, uh, let me try something with the pad. Uh, Give me one second. Here we go. Um, let's try imager. Maybe kick it out a little bit because it, 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 you know, Michael Brower calls these tone suckers. So, if Michael, you're watching. This is a tone sucker, but you already knew that because you're cool. I like that better and I can actually almost turn it up just a hair because now it's not so like <laughs> All the guitars here, all these leads, everything's axe effects because I just had it fired up and I was just throwing it down. Right? So I don't know if it says anything. Let's see if I wrote in the comments. I didn't. This is probably my Les Paul with the JP2C, uh, the Mark, F Mark II uh, amp, whatever they call it, modula modulation. I don't know what they call it. Like, what do they do? They model? I don't know whatever it is. But uh with the wawa right right in the right in this is all plug in i mean this is all get to it here we go and then we go to the next one which i think is about the same thing maybe a slightly different sound
classic James Lugo riff. You know, when you when you you know when you're playing your whole life, it's like, oh, here we go with that riff again. That that riff's kind of a part. That's like from Who's Crying Now, Journey. That's the most amazing guitar solo. Listen to the guitar solo on Who's Crying Now. Keep in mind, from what I had heard and read, that was literally a scratch track. That was like him just off the cuff. And not only is it so perfect, and not only is it so perfectly played, but it is so perfectly in tune. And that, playing like the way not Neil Sean does those types of bends and stays in that kind of tune... That, my friends, is not easy. Trust me. You could practice sweet picking all day long, and that's not going to make that happen. Another guy that's good at that is John Sykes. You know, like, this is love. Like, those kind of solos. This is the section from the uh, from the video. So here we'll, we'll we'll go from the solo section into this secondary part. Play the whole thing so you can feel it. Here we go. So here's all the the lead guitar. <laughs> This is why I bought all this. Does this is why I did all this initially, you know, in two thousand one, right? Two thousand one, me and my band at the time started our record, and you know, we it was not the, the greatest experience. Let's put it that way, and it was expensive. I mean, lots and lots of dough, and let's put it this way: we tracked drums and bass the weekend of September eighth uh, and ninth, I think of 2001 and then on that Tuesday was 9-11 or you know September 11th when the, the Twin Towers went down and our drummer was from Guatemala and we were trying to get him an O visa and he was married and he had his wife and he's, he had a baby and he was in America but his family was in Guatemala and you know obviously his wife was scared so it's like well you know you got to go home man you can't you know I mean you got to handle that so he did Fernando, but when that whole record finally ended, I just was like, wow, that was brutal. That was brutal. I got done with it. I hated it. I, let's put it this way. I got done with it. I never, I've never listened to it since I finished it. It's, it was like that kind of experience. And at the time, I was, uh, Phil X's wife was my, one of my voice students and I was friends with those guys and um, I called Phil and I said, "Hey, I just I just made this record and I I, I think it may suck. <laughs> Can you take a listen to it?" And he said, "Yeah, man, send it to me." So this is like 2002, right? Whatever. It took forever to finish. And I I sent it to him and he called me back. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, it sucks." And I was like, "Oh, okay." 
So what, you know, hell, what do, what do you think, man? Because I, you know, I held him in, you know, regard. He was, or esteem. He's a, he's a, he's a good, good musician, great musician. So he's, his suggestions were this. He said, well, I think you're singing too high. Like, it sounds like Zeppelin or like Skid Row. Like, your voice is so high. He said, you know, everything's like drop tuned and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't really know about that. What is that? And he told me, he said, listen, do this. He said, go to Guitar Center and get a set of 11s. Put 11s on your guitar. Tune the whole guitar to E flat. So the whole guitar to, to drops, drops to E flat, to drop it a half step. And he says, and then take the lowest string and drop that down to C sharp. And I was like, oh, and then it was, I made, it made, started making sense because I had a, I was working with a pop punk, a punk, pop punk band, not the used, I don't know, it was one band, but I used to go to their rehearsals and they were playing their bar chords with one finger. And I'm like, what is that? You know, keep in mind, you know, I'm, uh, you know, yeah, I'm a slow learner, but he says, yeah. And then you play the bar chords with one finger and then, you know, try that because it'll make you play different. You're, you know, you'll think different intervals and different arrangements and it also will, um, uh, it'll, it'll get you to sing lower. So at the time I was listening to that first Nickelback record back to Nickelback. And, you know, I mean, obviously people have a comment about it, but I think they're a cool band. Um, and I was really listening to that first record. So I put it on and I had my guitar in C sharp and I spent about an hour or two and I learned the basic rhythms of probably, you know, half a dozen of the songs, started playing through them and getting the riffs and going, oh, okay, I get it. And then that night I wrote the first song for the next record, which was called um, Where, Where Are You Now? Uh, let me see if I can find it. It was called Where Are You Now? H. Uh, James. Uh, see, yeah, Redemption was the one. We don't talk about Redemption. Uh, where, where are you today? That's what it's called. Hold on, let me find it. Um, do I not have it in here? Oh, there you go. Where are you today? So here it is. So this was the first time. And when I got done with it, I was so blown away. I was like, oh my God, I can do this. All hope is not lost. And the sound at the beginning, if any, I don't know if anybody's ever been to my, he was in my studio in Hollywood when I was on, I was on the corner of Hollywood and Coanga. This was the sound that the elevator made when the doors, I think, closed. It was this really distinct sound and my office was right there. So I would hear this all day long. So here it is. And that's the sound of the wind in the, in the elevator. So, yeah, so it's open and they're going to close. I think that's what it is. C sharp, and now my voice is lower. Listen. In the hands, I lost my way. Still a little like this. Now I hear it. I'm like, oh, I wish. I... And, and then I'm screaming at the end. You're in the in the chorus. Can you see? I'm lying in so that's. I think that's a C sharp. Yeah, so that's a high C sharp. But if I was in standard tuning, that would have been a high. That would have been a high E. And I would have hit it. I mean, my range is endless. But it would have sounded more like Skid Row. This has more of a guttural. So anyway, that's my big story. But that's where all this came from. So I bought all this stuff to make my own records. And I've barely done anything in the last number of years. It's just been, you know, work and, you know, if anybody gets backburnered, it's always me. But now I'm pushing the envelope. I'm so excited about this. So I'm going to bounce this out, listen to it in the truck, make any final tweaks, bounce it out and start a new song. And I have now the new five string bass. 
I'll show it to you, which is totally beyond awesome. Check this out. <laughs> this is an Ibanez EHB 1505 MS. And I know what everything means, right? EHB electric headless bass. I'm crazy. 1505. It's a five string MS multi scale. Dude, this is one of the, that's like a, it's like a fan fret, right? I mean, I would see these kind of basses and these guitars and I'd be like, man, that is crazy. This thing sounds amazing. Nordstrand pickups, active passive, killer. Whole other level for my broad bass. <laughs> then, we're gonna end the video with this because this, my friends, is a completely freaky thing. Ladies and gentlemen, my first seven string guitar. It's a, and my first PRS, whoa. PRS SE Mark Holcomb SVN, seven string. I guess Mark Holcomb is the dude from Periphery. I don't listen to that music, but there it is. And we've been getting it set up and it sounds killer. Yeah. I'll play you one second of it. But there you go. So we're gonna experiment with some with some crazy stuff. Because if you notice, like none of this stuff I'm doing is like really hard rock. It's like this, I'm in this zone with it. I don't really know where it comes from, but it's what I'm into. Uh, what was I gonna do? I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna play this, and then we're done. I'm sorry, I know this is a long video, but I'm really excited. So yeah, here's the PRS. <laughs> here's the PRS, man. With that same Axe Effects uh, patch or preset, uh, the the Mark. II. That sounds cool, but I, I keep in mind I don't know what to do with it, man. I don't. I've, and that's what I <laughs> I called my buddy Nate. Last night, I'm like, okay, I just don't know what to do, man. I like, I don't think seven strings, so I, I don't know. And he was talking about, oh, you can extend the chords and everything. I'm like, cool, well, you know, we'll get into it. <laughs> All right, that's it. Bye.